It's time to find out what Shane, what Shane, what Shane said with Shane Manila. Splitting the asset. Um, if you're a fan of Dynasty Trades and Five, or if you've watched it um, for any number of time, for any amount of time, you've heard me say uh, split the baby. Um, and generally what I mean by split the baby is split the asset. Uh, for some reason, I've decided to incorrectly uh, term that using Solomon's uh, wisdom, split the baby. Anywho, that's not the point. Uh, what is splitting the baby uh, or more correctly titled, named, splitting the asset? Well, first of all, it's exactly what it sounds like, right? You're breaking up one asset into multiple assets. Specifically, when I'm referring to split splitting the asset, I'm going to try not to say split the baby, but it might come out as split the baby a couple of times. But if it does, you know, I mean, split the asset. I'm not advocating um, splitting babies in half. Uh, I am anti splitting babies in half in case anyone was wondering my uh, my stand, stance on that. Anywho, splitting the asset. What I'm trying to do generally is I want to split an asset that is elite into two pieces. Uh, generally don't want to do it in the three pieces, but we'll get into that. Uh, what I want you to remember as well is that we're not trying to break, let's compare it to money. We're not com trying to break $20 into three pieces that total $20. Again, we'll get back to that later, three for ones. And we're not trying to split that one asset that's worth $20 into two assets that are worth $17. What we're trying to do is we're trying to break it down in such a way that we get what we get back is actually worth more than $20 or as close as possible to the equal value that we're sending out. Preferably, again, what we want to do if we do this correctly is end up turning this one asset into something that is greater than the asset that we gave up, this asset, um, turning that into elite assets. Um, giving up one elite asset and then somehow finding a way to turning that into two elite assets, three elite assets, etc. But we'll get there. Like I said, if you pull this off perfectly, what you can do is further split these assets. But again, we'll get into that. First thing you have to look at when you're looking at this, if you're deciding if you want to split an asset is your league size, how many teams and starters. Um, now, I play in 12 by 10s, 12 by 11s, 12 by 12s mostly. Um, I know some of you play in 10 by 8s, and by 10 by 8, I mean 10 teams, 8 starters, or 12 by 8, 12 by 9, 12 by 10, 12 and 11 and above. We'll, we're not going to list them all off, right? So just a, a couple thumbs, a couple thumbnails. That's not the word I'm looking for, whatever, you're used to it. Eight starters, uh, I don't think that you should ever be in a position where you are splitting an asset. You have eight starters. You should never be this down bad with eight starters. If you are, I don't know, show me your roster. I, I want to see that because that would be a roster consisting of maybe three legitimate starters, which would be pretty, pretty bad, um, pretty bad in an eight 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 starter league uh, nine starters again it's it's a thin roster it's just thin starting lineup excuse me so i'm less apt to tell you to go ahead and split your assets now i will say once we get into 10 starters it's a more feasible option more feasible approach plan when you get into 11 12 13 starters uh, i am in leagues with 12 13 and in some leagues for no apparent reason we have 14 starters which is just mind-boggling and then everybody starts um <clears throat> if you're in a 14 team league split everyone threshold receivers are like gold you get nine of those and you're in heaven and if start 14 but uh that, that that just um back to my point of the larger the starter size for the league more like the more likely i am to say that it's probably a good idea for you to split an asset so again, we do want to understand how that affects it, right? So what I'm going to do is just give you one example of a trade that someone jumped in my text messages about uh, today, actually, while I was trying to come up with an idea for this show or notes on this show. I uh, jumped in my inbox, in my DM box, my Twitter box, whatever you want to call it. I said, Jay Shane, I got an offer. I've got an offer of I give up Jamar Chase and a 25 second. And I'm going to go ahead and get back the 103 
JSN and Jaden Reed. Now, this is a super flex league. Obviously, I should note that at the top, but I didn't. So I'll note it again. It's a super flex league. It's a super flex start 10. Um, he wanted to give up Jamar Chase and a 25 second. And what he was going to get back was the 103, Jaden Reed and JSN. Now, I wouldn't make that deal personally. Uh, I, I don't I don't like that deal. I did plug it into a couple trade calculators um, and they actually did like the package. But if you know me, I don't generally take trade calculators as gospel. And another thing I noticed apropos of nothing, but just thought it was interesting. Uh, I went on about three sites that have trade calculators and none of them asked me how many starters uh, are for the team. Uh, one of them asked me how many teams were in the league. None of them asked me how many starters. So I, I don't know. You might want to take trade calculators that do not have that or do not request that information with a grain of salt, because that information is vital to determining if you should make a trade or if a trade is good or bad, or if a trade is completely off its rocker, um, as much as a trade can be off its rocker. So let's go back, right? Start. It's a 12-team start 10 super flex. He's given up Jamar Chase in a 25-second, and he was going to get back the 103, JSN, and Jaden Reed. Now, obviously, there's other variables that you know we could get into, but that's not the point. I don't want to do that. You know, Did he need a quarterback, et cetera? Uh, is he already loaded at wide receiver? Let's just look at this trade at face value, what I'm doing really highlighting this deal is think about it in these terms. If you have a start eight or start nine, is this a deal that you want to make? Do RJSN and Jaden Reed wide receivers that you think are no doubt about it starters in those formats? Right now, start eight, I, I can't imagine that I'm starting those two um, unless my roster is not great. Um, or what I should say, which is probably more true and more apt. I don't want to be in a position where I have to start those two. Um, if I am starting those two, it, it means obviously I don't have stronger options. Um, but back to the point, because I'm, I'm starting to get off the, uh, the train here. In a start eight, I am unlikely to do, not unlikely, I am definitely not doing that deal. In a start nine, definitely not doing that deal. In a start 10, right? This is where context really, really matters. Again, I said I didn't want to get into it, but context will matter a lot more in these situations. Um, do you have a quarterback? Do you need a quarterback? Is that why you're trading for the 103? Does your league not trade a lot? Is this the only offer you've gotten for Jamar Chase? Is this one of the few teams that can actually offer you a package that would approach what Jamar Chase is worth? Um, those all come into, uh, come into effect when you get to start 10, start 11, et cetera. Um, not every team is going to have a package that could even near Jamar Chase's value. And again, based off the calculators that I saw, this trade at least does, um, sorry, this trade at least does uh, approach the value of Jamar Chase, Jamar Chase and, and one of the calculators actually exceed, exceeds the value. But again, that's not really the point. The point is you want to look at, am I in a start eight, start nine? In those cases, I am less likely to split an asset as opposed to start 10, start 11, start 12, obviously start 13, 14. Um, you are splitting absolutely everything that you could ever find. When, uh, when is a good time to split an asset? And what's the general framework of that asset? And maybe what are some of the benefits? I think everyone knows right off the bat um, if you're rebuilding, it's probably a good idea to split an asset, right? Um, when you're bad, you need to stack assets because one player, one pick generally isn't going to get you out of your bad Uh, it's hard for that to happen on a fantasy roster. Again, this also does, you know, it's affected by how big you're starting, um, your starting roster size is just for the rest of the conversation though we'll just assume it's starting 10 start 10 which is a happy medium i think um so if you need to stack assets generally if you're rebuilding you need to stack assets i mean uh 
you know, generally one pick is not going to get you out of the bad dumb, the bad zone and turn your team around. Uh, even if you look at last year, let's say you had taken CJ Stroud at the 101. Um, but that was really the only the only player that you added of any significant value to your roster last year. And you earned that 101. There's a fairly good chance that CJ Stroud by himself, as great as a rookie season as he had, QB7 overall, I believe, points per game, as great as a rookie season as he had, him by himself without additional players on your roster, um, new players, I should say, um, probably did not drag you out of the, the team or make you better than the team, significantly better than the team that earned that 101 originally. So again, if you need to stack assets, it's probably when you're rebuilding, you need to stack assets. So it's probably behooves you, uh, probably behooves you to go ahead and try to split that asset. Now, what you want to do with that asset though, right? You want to try to split that asset in a way where you can get high end value still with at least. So let's just take the 101, for example. Let's give examples. I have the 101. If someone offers me the 105 and the 106, that's a, that is not a slam dunk by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but obviously, that would be better than the 108, 110, and 112, even though I'd be getting three picks. And I said stacking assets, but we're going to get refine this a little. You want high end assets when you're stacking them as much as you can. Um, so if you can split that 101 for two top six picks, uh, two other top six picks, it's probably a good idea to do that as opposed to taking three bottom of the first round draft picks. Um, and generally that is because uh, first round draft picks as they get lower in the round uh, do decrease in hit rate. Although there's been a little uh, a little bit of uh, variance to that over the last four years. Another time, it's probably a good idea to s split an asset. As you look at your starting lineup um, and you realize, I have absolutely no way of filling a starting lineup. Uh, I, I, am, I am at least one to two starters short, and I don't even have threshold receivers on my bench short. Type I'm talking about. You've got Juju Smith Schuster on your bench, Tyquan Thornton, Isaiah Hodgins, Charlie Jones, David Bell, Tyrus Marshall, Darius Slayton, DJ Chark. A lot of hopes and dreams and a lot of those players at one time or another. It's fun to remember that uh, a lot of people liked a lot of those players. And I might even like some of those players at some point or another. Besides the point, let's say your roster's thin, start 10. You are looking, you can't, f you, if you were to have to hit submit today, and I understand that you have five months until the season, but just in general, let's just say, follow along with me on this journey. If you were to hit submit today, you have to put Jawan Jennings in your starting lineup and Tyquan Thornton. You know what? It might be a good idea to split the asset, a asset at that point. Do you have uh, multiple wide receivers? that are elite do you have again uh, as i spoke about earlier i think like a jamar chase aj brown cd lamb do you have a justin jefferson and uh, let's move down say puka nakua and a t higgins can i split these assets maybe not t higgins so much but can i split puka maybe into two starters and not just two rando starters right that's the other thing that's important you got to be a little discerning here you don't just take take excuse me you don't just take what anyone's willing to give you you have to do be a little discerning right someone comes at you and they're like well how about jahan dotson and jerry judy for your puka what do you think that's two for one can we do that we would say no you're going to be discerning absolutely under no circumstances would you accept a deal like that. That You could be in a league that start three or you could be in a league that start 7,000. Maybe in a 7,000 starter league, I would actually take those players. No. What I'm talking about is if you need two starters, maybe you look at Puka Nakua coming in at the wide receiver six on KTC today or as of right now. And maybe you go, hmm. Well, that dude over there, he, he's got him, Jalen Waddle and Zay Flowers. Maybe that's a deal I would think about. 
Probably not. Probably a little too low, but y- you get the gist. Maybe we find someone that's, you know, not so far out of Puka's tier, but probably doesn't have the name hype like him. Like, let's say, I don't know, one of my favorite guys, Chris Olave. Could I trade Puka for Chris Olave and even go down to the second piece and add, say, Amari Cooper, Christian Kirk, something like that? Now, obviously, you're taking some risk with Chris Olave. That's a whole other story. But you get the point, right? The names aren't really the most important thing. The most important thing is, can I not fall too far out of that tier um, with a major piece that I'm getting back? And then the second piece that I'm getting back be above a threshold receiver, right? We don't just want a threshold receiver. What I want is a wide receiver that is obviously a no doubt about it starter as well. Scott sometimes calls them innings eaters, um, something like that. Um, so again, that that's, you know, the second time or one of the times that you might look to split an asset again is if you need starters. Now, I, I need you to understand something. You don't want to be in a position where you're splitting an asset for starters uh, just so that your team will still be ungood. Uh, let's say that, right? And while I know that everyone is good at fantasy football, every 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 person that I speak to just about on the Twitter streets, uh, none of their teams are ever bad. And also at most of the content creators I listen to, their, their teams are pretty, pretty good. So shout out to them for all being good. Me, I'll admit to it. Uh, I have teams where I've completely, absolutely destroyed uh, destroyed the roster. Um, and we're going to look at one of them because that kind of illustrates the point of what I'm talking about when even if you split the asset, it's still not going to help your team. You're still not going to be in a position where you're going to win. Um, and you're also going to hurt yourself in your rebuild. So we'll go ahead and go to this team, this league. It's a... 14 teams start 12. It is a monster of a league. And when I need you to brace yourself for the horrors you are about to witness, because this team is very bad. Um, I don't want to get into how it got there, but it's bad. It's bad. So we'll go there. So looking at this team, right? There are only, first of all, there's only some tradable assets. Uh, I do want to note, I do want to note, right? The one thing, uh, the 25 picks are not showing up on here, but I do have uh, four 25 firsts, right? Um, but legitimate starters, it, it ain't many. I'll, I'll be quite honest with you, but it's Jalen Hurts, Anthony Richardson, Russ Wilson, Deontay Johnson, maybe Blake, Blake Gorham, maybe Zach Charbonnet if stuff goes right. You look at some of those wide receivers and you can just t- tell that things went bad. Anywho, the point though, the point of besides that this roster is awful, which it legitimately is. So anybody wants to call me out on that, cool. I know I'm the only content creator that's ever had a bad fantasy team. So anyway, if I trade Jalen Hurts right now, let's say I traded Jalen Hurts for two starters, and the best offer I could get is, oh, I don't know. Let's just think. Let's say Matthew Stafford and Amari Cooper and Christian Kirk. Let's just give me three. We're going hard. This dude's coming at me just throwing things. He's throwing Matt Stafford, Christian Kirk, and I already Amari Cooper. Throwing those three at me for Jalen Hurts. Cool. I have three starters. I, I'm closer to being able to start a, a legitimate lineup, but uh, I'm still going to be a terrible team. And besides that, I'll have stunned my own uh, rebuild because Jalen Hurts is better than those three pieces. And quite frankly, if I'm selling Jalen Hurts, I should be getting stronger assets back. So that's what I say when I'm saying don't just take three assets for one, even in a situation where you need starters for your lineup, if getting those starters isn't going to be enough to move the needle for you um, in a good way, in a positive way. And that's what would happen here. It's my pretty face back. All right. So I know I'm going a little long. I want to wrap this up. So uh, so uh, I know I start to lose people's attention after a little bit. So let me wrap this up a little bit, right? So I said, again, another place that you want to look, if you want to split an asset, when a player is, you could sell a player high, uh, the market overvalues them. Like for instance, oh, I don't know. I feel like having people attack me. CJ Stroud, that dude. Uh, say you could give up CJ Stroud in a third and get Jalen Hurts for a second. Yeah, you, you, you probably want to do that. Or, or, um, one of our Dynasty Trades and Five patrons hit me up in the Discord today. Uh, 
funny again that I was on this topic. But anyway, he traded CJ Stroud for Kyler Murray and a 25 first. Uh, that's definitely a way I would split that asset, Mr. Stroud. But again, it's not the person's name. I don't want you to think I hate Stroud or anything. It's any time that you have a player that's trending or the market overvalues them more than you think they're worth, and you can get back a player that's in the same tier as them and then a plus, right? That's a beautiful thing. Another place that you want to might, might want to split an asset, again, is when you have an older player, uh, Tyree Kill. And I will say this, moving an older player, uh, this is one of the few times that I will say that it's okay to get back less in production or trade value um, because you know the old player you have on your roster is not going to hold their value significantly longer. Um, and if you, just as an example, Tyree Kill, just in my leagues, um, I know I've tried to move him what I for what I feel is fair, uh, 105s, maybe 106 in a second, and uh, he just – doesn't have that value on the streets. He just does not have that street value right now. Um, so if, and it's mostly because he's an older player and he's also put an expiration date on his own career. But same thing with Devontae Adams, who has not told us he's going to retire in two years or another year. Uh, his value, his street value is also not great right now. Um, so I am okay with moving off of them at a slight loss. Again, let's not get ridiculous. I'm not telling you to go trade them for anything at all. Uh, going back to what I talked about, selling a player that's over the market over hypes or the market likes more than you, you can always split an asset based on tiers. Um, just for example, I just jumped over to KTC, hate it or love it. The rankings are what they are, but they're going to use them for example. So right now, Zay Flowers and Devonta Smith are roughly in the same tier. Devonta Smith above Zay Flowers. Um, for my mind and for your dynasty rosters, there is not a significant difference between those two players. And quite frankly, I don't know that I would rank Devontae Smith over Zay Flowers, but I also don't know that I would rank Zay Flowers over Devonta Smith because they're just basically kind of the same guy. So if I can trade one for the other and just get an extra piece, cool, let's do that. Always try to get that extra piece when you're trading players within tiers. And then lastly, this is from my dude, Scott because he loves grinding the edges, right? He loves moves like this. You can also do this with lower valued players as well. You can move a guy like Devin Singletary for Michael Carter and a third. Um, I love Devin Singletary. I'm probably a little, what's the word I'm looking for? Overhyped. I'm just use the word overhyped again. I'm a little over on Devin Singletary, whereas Michael Carter, not so much, but the point is, is I'm getting another running back that I can throw into my lineup um, and getting a third round pick. I'm getting an additional piece. And quite frankly, if Devin Singletary is the difference between you and a championship, well, wait, that's never going to happen. Devin Singletary will legitimately never be the difference between you and a championship as much as I love Devin Singletary. So, yeah, you can grind those edges. It doesn't just have to be high end players. Uh, another example of that, can you trade? Russ Wilson for Justin Fields in a second. Yeah, I know. Justin Fields isn't starting right now. But guess what? If Justin Fields starts, my dude's going to put up QB one weeks. Russ Wilson could start every game next year, and uh, there will be many, many weeks where he, he would not be a QB one. Um, and that's not a slight on Russ Wilson. I think he's fine as a player. It's just they, they, the two gentlemen have different skill sets, and one has the ability to put up crooked numbers. Uh, that being Justin Fields, where Russ Wilson does not put up crooked numbers. Um, so that's it. That's it. Just my brief primer on splitting the asset. I, I'm sorry if I went a little long. I tried to keep it as brief as possible. Um, and I didn't actually hit everything I wanted to. So hit me up in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, I'd really like the bait around this. Tell me where there's holes in my argument. Tell me where I'm right, too. Uh, that's cool. I like hearing that. But either way. Uh, comment, like, appreciate it. Don't forget that uh, we've got the DD draft stream coming up, draft night one. Make sure you're tapped into that. Uh, hopefully, I'll be allowed on that. I don't know. I, I think so. I'll uh, I'll go ahead and a uh, probably uh, advocate for myself to my dude Scott. See if I can get on there and use the code DDD on Underdog, and you get entered into some of the drafts. Nope, some of the 
lotteries. That's also not the word I'm looking Giveaways. We're having giveaways here at D-Day. Um, so go sign up for Underdog using the promo code DDD and get entered in those Johns. Um, as well as you get a, uh, they match they match your deposit up to a certain amount, like $100, I think. Maybe more than that, but I think it's 100 So don't quote me on that. I don't want to get in trouble with Underdog or Ray. All right? So appreciate y'all listening. Appreciate y'all watching. Talk to you later.